Tulahi, let's now talk matters. Cocktail break from the seriousness and have some fun in as far as mixing juices and cocktails are concerned. And joining me on set is Tom O'Brien, mixologist, Irish mixologist, I must say. And joining us a little bit later is Eugene Nyaundi from the Africa Ram Guild, who is also a mixologist. Tom, good to see you. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, mixology, what yep. is the art of mixology and what is it entirely about? Okay, well, it's very simple. You know, you go out to a bar, Nowadays, Ken Kenyan as a country, so what I've learned is that it was a, very much a lager drinking, a beer drinking country. <laughs> Nowadays, when you go into a bar, you can kind of see people producing some mixed drinks and some cocktails. So we call these people bartenders, essentially, to work behind the bar. <laughs> Mixology is just like the next step. So The next step after bartender? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so what they're doing is they're putting more time into education and learning learning about the products, the flavors, and then learning how to balance them correctly. So it's just, it's a coined term that's used to describe a professional bartender that's dedicated to the career as a service. Mm -hmm. Talking of the professionality, is it something you learn, uh, you have to go to school and learn, or is it something that you develop out of talent? Um, well, there's a couple of different options. The beauty about this industry is there's many options and many opportunities. So there, there is bar schools that are, we've uh, attended here in Kenya, mm -hmm. and in Nairobi especially, but you can also learn from your mentors that are in the trade. Also, you've got access to a lot of information online, so you can learn from things like YouTube or Google about how to educate yourself on what's around you in the bar. Fair enough, and more than just the mixing and the mixture of the different cocktails, I mean, what kind of professional responsibility is it on the mixologist, on the bartender, to make sure all you do is perfectly in line with the best of professional standards? Yeah. Well, the thing is, you know, Alcohol, you have to be very careful. It's something that, you know, when you take this industry, um, you have to be very respectful uh, with what, what you're delivering to the guest. So mm -hmm. when it comes to mixology and bartending, everything is like a fine art. It's a balance, you know. If you, if you walk into one bar and you ask for a cocktail, a mojito, say, uh, when you go to an next bar, you don't want too much of a divide, a difference, because it's a, it's a classic recipe. There is twists on it, but you want to have that consistency bar to bar to bar. You know, so there's like a there's like a foundation of education that people need to learn in order to keep that consistency, so that people know that when they come into your bar that they're going to have a good mixed drink. You know? and, and what does it take to be a professional mixologist? Um, it just takes time. It takes time. This is one of those industries that the more work you put in, the more that comes back. You know. Um, and I guess you must be putting lengthy hours into your job. You? Well, I, my career is in, in bartending extended over 10 years, and it, it brought me from the US, uh, the Caribbean, uh, Europe, and then, of course, Ireland Africa as well. Now. And Africa now. Well, now we've moved slightly into uh, media a little bit more so. So, what we do is we actually we travel and promote the bartending community, which is why we're here in, in Kenya, just seeing what's going on mm -hmm. in the Nairobi bar scene as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you talk of the art of mixology, there's often, and what you alluded to, of the professionalism mm -hmm. that is involved in the art. Uh, why is, does it seem as though that is a missing aspect in as far as the general industry is concerned? There are professionals mm -hmm. like you and few, but it's not regarded as a profession on its own. Yeah, it's just one of those things that takes time. You know, no matter where you are uh, in the world, which we've seen uh, amongst our travels, you know, there's just different tiers, as in there's different levels of bartending that's out there. You know, the people that actually dedicate the time into doing the hard work and the education, you know, they rise to the top and they, they, they are um, availing of more opportunity. So when people get that understanding that there's, there's, there's money to be made or there's opportunities or time to travel, things like that, they invest a little bit more. So it just takes time. You know, there's some big brands here that are doing some great things on the ground. Mm -hmm. Um, in the we come to the trade of tools, yeah. uh, but I want to get your answer to a very personal question. Yes. Uh, do you get professional satisfaction from what you do? Uh, honestly, um, I've, had, I've had a little try at many different jobs. This, by far, has been the most uh, rewarding, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it, there's just so much opportunity because it, it can literally take you anywhere in the world. And we, we, we met one of the bartenders that's based here in Nairobi the other day. Um, he entered a competition and represented Kenya on the world spectrum and he came 11th in the world so he was ranked the 11th best bartender in the world and he comes from Nairobi mm -hmm. but that that just it inflates their themselves as a brand you know and um, people got to know him very quickly he met a lot of people and there's so much opportunity that actually he just invested in himself he knew what, he knew what he was doing he did his research but invested in himself and it came back so uh, he's world known now at this point Fair enough. Earlier on, I was reading the work of some mixologists, globally renowned mixologists, 
one among them, and interestingly, this quote stood out for me, it says, and I quote, mixology to us is an art. We tell stories and create memories. Every cocktail has a story. Has a story, yeah. But every cocktail has a story? Um, yeah. Well, the way I look at it is, um, and, and people are, are, are thinking about, about um, cocktail in this way too, is it is an art form to a degree, you know? When you're mixing flavors, it's like mixing paints. When you're presenting something uh, beautiful for your guests, you're, you're creating something for them. And where does that creation come from? It's people's experience. So they're creating these flavors that are based on something they might have at Christmas time or something they might have had when they were a child. So there's a story behind mm -hmm. where these flavors come from, where these creations come from. So it's an art form in a liquid form mm -hmm. uh, for our guests. And, and is it a profession, is it a discipline that one can seek, then get equally a living satisfaction out of it, be it a job? Mm -hmm. it's, as I said, it's one of those careers that the more that you put into it, the more hard work and a good mind and be respectful, the more that comes back. You know, Everyone wants to have a good job. They want to earn good money. They want to travel. They want to have opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those, it's, it's one of those things that, and I, I cannot stress this enough, the more hard work you put in, the more that comes back. It's a very rewarding industry to be a part of. Fair enough. And joining us now equally is Eugene Nyaundi from the Africa Ram Guild, who is also a mixologist. Uh, Eugene, let's talk of the local industry and as far as mixology is concerned. Where will you rate it? We are a growing uh, industry. There has been a lot of competition recently from the different brands. They're trying to definitely raise awareness uh, of their brands, but most importantly, try to raise awareness of the cocktail culture. And when you go around the different bars and the different restaurants, you're all able to observe different things that are really interesting. Mm -hmm. And are there unique cocktails in as far as Africa and Kenya is concerned? As far as the bartenders are concerned, they are very creative. I mean, the limit is and boundless, you know, mm -hmm. so different bars have room for different opportunities. So mm -hmm. if you now, for example, go to a hotel bar, the opportunities are based on the, not just on the ingredients, but on the creative, creative mind of the bartender, mm -hmm. you know. And let's talk of the persuasiveness of mixology. Is, is it something that a Kenyan probably who is done with high school will venture into? I definitely do encourage more young people to venture into the mixology career. You can be a bartender, you can eventually become a brand ambassador and uh, or do brand marketing. It helps you gain your confidence among, uh, amongst your peers. It also helps you network with different individuals more than po possibly any other career you will have. Fair enough, Tom, you have come with your thread of tools, I understand, as well. <laughs> Many of them tools as well. Yeah. If you will kindly explain to us what we have on our skills. Yeah, so, so basically this, this, is, this is the most basic setup that we could have. And the reason why we did this is just to show how simple it is to start off. So what we have here is, is referred to as a jigger, okay? And these come in different sizes and shapes. And it's just for measuring what we're going to put into our vessels and our, our cocktails. Something like this is, is basically a strainer. And usually when we, when we use these tools, we can break up ice and fruit and we don't necessarily want to put it in the drink. So this, this will keep that presenting from going into the drink. Um, basic bar spoon, just like a domestic spoon, but a little bit longer for ease of use. And then of course the shakers here. So what, what we're using shakers for, there's different styles of cocktails, but what this does essentially is um, it's mixing the liquids and mixing with ice and it's chilling down the drinks. Mm -hmm. um, and then basically we just use glassware or any sort of vessel after that to present the cocktail in. Fair enough, you, you talked of a tool that is used for measuring. I, I wonder how much of importance is measurement and specific measurements in making mm -hmm. cocktails, in making... Uh, yeah, well, the, the, the way you look at it is um, the, there's two ways uh, of, of presenting yourself as a bartender and making cocktails. You can free pour um, or you can use jiggers. The free pour is a very skilled pr um, part of bartending and it's, it can be very inconsistent. So people usually use jiggers and they have a, a nice arrangement on their bar. Um, and it, it's quite important because when, you, when a guest comes in and they have a cocktail and they return, they want to know, they're, they're returning for that drink. So consistency is what we say is the key to success in a bar. Mm -hmm. um, using jiggers and measurements, you know that you'll be as close as possible to that consistent element of bartending. And I understand you make different cocktails uh, regarding to the preference of an individual, is it? Yeah, well, how I was trained and how I did do it is uh, when, we, when, when we meet a guest for the first time, um, and we might know the individual. We just ask them like what, what their preference is, you know, what spirit based do you like? Do you like dry, sweet, savory, sour, bitter? And you kind of, you just ask enough questions that you can use your knowledge and experience to narrow down what it is that they might like.
Fine, Avi. Let me get Eugene to the conversation mm. equally. Eugene, are these tools available in as far as our local market is concerned? Yeah, they are, they, they are available at uh, some local uh, specialty stores, mm -hmm. and that's because not everyone is aware of uh, how to use the tools. So basically, it's a bartender who get the equipment and they do a lot of training, and also the brands do a lot of training towards the bartender so that we can definitely just look at how to promote the culture, you know. And for someone who is equally interested in mixology and getting to the art of bartending, yeah. well, where are some of the places you would recommend locally? If you want to do training, I do recommend we have the Nairobi Bar School, which is one of the good bar schools that you can actually start, because it will give you a base of not just cocktails, but coffee, and, and uh, just the whole idea of what beverage industry looks like. But then also we have a specialty. As I said, the brands also have their own academies where they try to ensure that you know their brands and you know the, the signature styles of, the, of these different spirits in the category. Gentlemen, we have talked. Let's get to the action of the day as well. <laughs> yes, Tom, definitely. You will kindly mix some for us. OK, cool. Well, as, you, as you explain. Yeah. I'm going to show you something very simple because uh, uh, we've put this together this morning. Fair um, enough. Um, so basically what I have here is just a range of flavors and syrups and um, I think these are coming to the Kenyan market fairly soon um, but I brought them with me. Uh, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to just put together something simple and I'm going to show you um, how simple it is to put together something nice. Now this is a mocktail so we're not using alcohol, it's too early in the morning to use alcohol okay, so we're going to make a little mocktail. So we start off with a little with a glass which is obviously our vessel in which we're going to put the drink so we're going to start off um, I'm going to do a little base of strawberry. So this drink itself was inspired by the breakfast buffet in our hotel. Um, so we're using some strawberry um, as a little garnish element, but also for flavor. And we're just going to put a little bit in the bottom of the glass, like so. Okay. Yeah. That doesn't require necessity of measuring. No. How you objectively judge this, this is, Yeah, so what I'm doing, as we spoke about before, is, um, is uh, either free pour or using uh, an, a jigger like this. Okay. And we're doing a mocktail here and we're being a little bit uh, spontaneous on the spot. So I'm going to use my experience to put okay. together something interesting. I mean, ten years of service, of course, shows you <laughs> where the limits are. Go yeah, ahead. exactly. So now what we're going to do is um, what we've made this morning is just some banana smoothie. So we're just adding some banana smoothie into the glass. Mm -hmm. Very simply made. Now we made this with yogurt and fresh bananas, so it's delicious. Um, we're also going to add a little bit of coconut. So cream of coconut. You can substitute things like uh, coconut milk and just add a little bit of sugar. But this is, uh, this is very tasty. Now, we're just going to add some ice and shake. So basically, what I have here is obviously our container, our ice, um, and our mixture. We're going to make sure it's sealed. And what we want to do is transfer the liquid from top to the bottom from a shaking process. And what that does is it just adds a little bit of dilution, uh, makes the drink cold, um, but also mixes the liquids in it. So that's really important for this style of drink. Okay. So we'll just give it a little shake there. Yes. OK. And you'll see that it's getting a little bit cold, so we're ready to, uh, to pour it there. So again, we're just, we're, just, we're just having a bit of fun this morning. We're just playing with some flavors. So okay. we're starting off with strawberry. In here, we've got a, a banana smoothie we made this morning and a little bit of coconut as well. So we're just going to pour it in. A mixture of three as of now. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So very simple. I'm, I'm just using the spoon here to layer it. So you have a nice, attractive looking drink. You see, which we have with the layers and stuff here. So, mm -hmm. I guess you're going to have to give it a taste. Let me do so. Give your sign of I've been checking on my weight lately. <laughs> I hope it doesn't it's calorie free. Well, it's not really. It's actually very sweet. Yes. Yeah. We were told now that the Kenyan palate is a little bit sweet. Mm -hmm. With something like this, it's kind of it's one of those uh, digestive or something, you know, um, you after having a bit breakfast. of food. And that was quick. How long does it take often to prepare one cocktail? It, it depends on the skill of the bartender. Re realistically, um, if you're producing multiple cocktails and you have an extensive menu, you need to be quick. But the quickness comes from practice. You know, when you're in a high volume cocktail bar, you need to be quick. Mm -hmm. You need to make money for the bar, you need to pay for the labor, electricity. But you also want to have a bit of fun along the way. So a lot of people, they incorporate some flair um, and have a bit of fun. But again, you've got to be quick. 
after testing, one of the things I said was it is sweet. Yes. It's not every cocktail that you make that once one gives you the feedback mm. of it's sweet or it was nice. Then yeah. how do you deal with the negative feedback as mixologist, as a professional bartender? Well, the, the, what, when, you're, when you're producing, so if you were to join me in my bar and you stand in front of me and you said, I like sour or I like sweet or I like savory or whichever way, mm -hmm. we'd, ca we'd cater for you in, in that, what your tastes are. With our menus, we also want to explain to guests, you know, what it is that this drink is going to taste like. So what we're doing this morning is, is just a bit of fun, a couple of cocktails. But if you were to be in my bar and you were going to spend some money, I would ensure that I'm going to produce something for you that is to your taste. Mm -hmm. If there is some negative feedback, it just comes down to professionalism. You know, not everyone's going to be pleased in your bar. So ensuring that at least they're having a good time and the ambience and the lighting and the music is right. But if they're not happy with the drink, we, 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 in my market, we just we, we replace it. Tom, you know. you're from Ireland, yes, Ireland Irish too. by yeah. national. How is the mixology industry in Ireland? It's, uh, it's huge. It's huge. It's now, it's one of those things, as you spoke about earlier, it's, it's, it's a growing trend. Now in Ireland, it's a, li it's a little bit further along the line, um, but a lot of young people are investing time in it. And the reward is there, the opportunities are there. They're traveling all over the world. They're working in places like uh, Dubai or America. Uh, Australia, which is great, mm -hmm. but it's, um, it's one of those things that when I started off 10 years ago, it was quite scarce and quite rare. And then as, uh, as the market grew and brands invested in the community, it just started to develop and now a lot of people are getting involved. Uh, Eugene as well, what are some of the importance of partnering up with other spheres of the globe that have equally, as Tom says, prospered in as far as mixology is concerned? I think when, when, you, when you definitely partner up with other uh, different uh, brands or the different countries, you gain experience, you gain confidence, which is most very important. And when you come back, you really appreciate the fact that cocktail culture is very different in different uh, countries and in different uh, continents as well. So, and that, especially for the African market, is really important because as the bartenders are coming up, they need to see what's happening across the world so that they can also feel confident enough to actually go and compete against bartenders who have been probably doing this for 15 or 16 years, you know. And here we are, we are probably going to a competition, we've never seen some of the products, and we go there and we still shine, you know, you find bartenders from Africa who become top 10, you know, top, top 15, which is, a, you know, which it's in itself tells you that we are growing, we are very competitive, and we actually have the opportunity to be on, on, on a larger scale in the cocktail world. I'd like to just jump in on the point there because what Eugene said is actually very important. You know, you mightn't have everything that you need here at this moment in time to be able to be, you know, on the same level with people in markets like New York or London. Mm -hmm. But what they do have here, which we've noticed, and uh, we're actually we're, we're planning our next trip to come back here because it's, it's been it's been amazing. It's your first time, time equally understand. It's our first Europe. time, yeah, first time in Nairobi, in Kenya, and Africa. Your impressions of the mixology industry? The mixology. I, I was, I more, it was, it, be, it exceeded expectation. I was so happy, you know. Um, and meeting the people here, for me, this industry is all about hospitality. It's all about people. And as, as I was about to say, um, they mightn't have all the tools that they need or have all the products that we might have in our market, but what they do have is heart and passion and creativity. And when that's the core, after that, it's just like the icing on the cake, a little bit more confidence to it. But if you have the heart to do something, if you put in the hard work, you'll go. You go very far, yeah. and which we, we um, you know, Patrick, who we spoke about briefly, you know, he's ranked 11th in the world, in the world of best bartenders. Fair enough. Uh, Eugene, can we confidently reach a time when we can say this is a Kenyan cocktail, this is more or less of our trademark as Kenya? Yeah, I, I, I think right now we're at uh, br br Brink, you know, because we started with the Dow, which was pro probably the famous the most famous cocktail from uh, Carnival Restaurant, but right now with too many competitions happening, the bartenders are definitely creating signature serves that will, in the next 10 or 15 years, be seen in other bars, you know. And that's why we do the competitions, because the brands are trying to make the bartenders create drinks that will fit not only for this market, but will be an identity for what this market looks like. And how do you convince young people to seek a living through mixology locally here in Kenya? I mean, the I mean, as I said, uh, you, you can go to school, you can, and you can start from being a cleaner because some of the best bartenders, they always start from humble beginnings, you know. I, I can tell you that we have several bartenders who actually started as cleaners and then they went into service, you know, you, you, clean, the, you clean the cups, you 
then you go into learning how to actually talk to people and then you gain your confidence and you start now making simple basic drinks and then once you gain your confidence now you're able to now learn the, the basics of flair mixology or craft bartending mm -hmm. yeah can i add to that as well it's just from my from my research i'm talking to a lot of people on the ground last week you know it's it's one of those things like why would i go to a bar you know i'm, I'm a servant or i'm just pleasing you know the guest is it is it a career it's a profession mm -hmm. you know and really really now when when you look outside this market you see what's happening in the other markets and what what bartenders are getting involved with and you know um, the travel the opportunity that comes from this industry it's one of those things it's, it just convert it, it turns on the light it, it can convert you to to investing the time as we said earlier and we have said time and time again the more work you put into this, the time that you dedicate to education, rather than going out and having fun after work, you know, spend a little time a week to just learning or reading a book or checking stuff out online, it will take you so far. And Nairobi and in Kenya is just one of those markets that's just, as you said, on the brink. I guarantee in the next, is we've there, seen this trend before. potential if you are to judge Huge. from an outsider? Absolutely, view. absolutely. Because you have the, 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 you know, the right community, the right people, you've got the good heart and the, the, the creative mind, all it takes is just a little, a little bit more time and you'll see that it's going to be on the forefront, I would say, globally. Uh, Eugene, what are some of the challenges that local mixologists are facing? Um, some of the challenges, we don't have some of the products. You know, the consistent supply, for example, of syrups in the market or something we call bitters is, has been a challenge. But the one thing that is amazing about the Kenyan bartenders is that they are able now to learn from such uh, simple things and create their own bitters. You know, you go to bars where some bartenders have created their own bitters, which means that now there's a, some form of consistency for their bars. And also when the tourists are coming in, you know, they, they get to taste these cocktails and, they, and, they, and we definitely leave them with an impression that we're not just growing, but Kenya is a place to watch. As, as I always like to say, Nairobi is the city whereby if you fall in love with it, then the rest of East Africa will just follow, follow around. Let's talk of the prop profitability aspect of mixology. Yeah. Does it stand a chance of, of being a profitable uh, job, a profitable industry locally, Eugene? It, it is, um, for me, it, it is, or it has been a profitable industry. I mean, I look at it not just from a point of bartending, but it has given me the opportunity to travel. And I think for some of the young people who are coming up, they love to travel, they love to go across the world. And why not join an industry whereby it's not just fun interacting with people, but also fun going around the world, doing something that you're passionate about and just serving flavor on a glass. Uh, Tom, I understand creativity is at the heart of this industry. Mm -hmm. How much is innovation important to uh, mixology? Well, you, if you look at it, and you, a lot of similarities carry across between um, the food industry and the drinks industry. So if we think of a restaurant, we think of the chef. You know, a lot of finesse and flavors goes into what they put together on the plate. And again, they're creating these dishes from their own experience and background and education for the guest. So a finished plate is always beautiful and it adds that extra value. So when you come into the bar end of it, you know, it's now, as you said, those international markets are now looking at it as the same sort of mentality, is that it's about creative, it's about flavor, it's about working with what you know. But again, in this industry, you got to taste, you got to learn, but be respectful of alcohol and flavors and things like this and put it together in your own way. And that's where the creativity comes from because everyone has a different palate. You know, everyone smells differently. So if we're putting something together, this is from our experience and knowledge. Uh, and that in itself is the creativity of uh, mixed drinks and mixology. Uh, Eugene, for someone who is probably in love with mixology but doesn't know where to start in as far as the local industry is concerned, what will you tell them this morning? I would like to encourage them, I think, with the online presence, you can definitely see a lot. I think one of the key things that we, we are at a point where by social media has played a big influence on how we interpret cocktails and the cocktail culture. So we have an opportunity to learn online, but we also have an opportunity to actually start, as I said, with the basics, which is really important. Because mm -hmm. once you know the basics, then the rest will take care of itself. And, and how are Kenyans, how are local bartenders reacting to the professionality of, of this uh, mixology? For the Kenyan bartenders, we are really encouraged because the community is, uh, we, we not only share the, the networking or the knowledge, but we also have a chance to actually learn from different bartenders who are coming in. So for example, Tom who came just recently and he, he has been here for the first time, we have really learned a lot from uh, an experience from an outsider's perspective, but also from 
the, the bartenders who have traveled. We also definitely bring in a lot of material and content for us to share. So it's not just profitability in the sense of money, but it's all profitability in the sense of you you're growing, because you need to grow for you to be able to become better. Uh, Tom, I understand you also need to make us another cocktail. Yeah, so if I've been told, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, uh, luckily enough, I've got a few bits around me here, so we can, uh, we can put together another drink. Um, again, we're going to use some local. Uh, what we've done is we've blended up some, uh, some citrus, so some lime, uh, some pineapple, fresh pineapple, and some mint. So again, we just made a little juice here this morning. Now, we're actually going to add in, uh, but this is called, a, it's a build cocktail, so we're going to make it in the glass. So we've got a, a little bit of ice here. Uh, I'll just strain a little bit of that out. So we're just going to add some ice into our glass. Mm -hmm. So we're building the cocktail as we go, um, and it's, a very, it's just a very quick, on a spur of the moment thing. There's a lot so, of ice, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, what you were learning here is that, uh, you know, some people don't necessarily like ice, but again, it's, it's about the communication with the bartender, so we know, or with the guests, so we know what they want when we're serving them. So we, what we did this morning is we made this, uh, this, this juice here, and again, it's a mixture of uh, fresh pineapple, some mint leaf, and some citrus. We're going to add in a little bit of passion fruit as well, just a little drop, just to add in the flavors. And Eugene, as Tom even mixes this, I want us to talk of the availability of these mixtures as well in, yeah. in the local market. Are they available? They are currently not available, but we are definitely looking to bring it into the market mm -hmm. by next year. Tom, what is the average cost, if you know, of this? Uh... Uh, well, as, as it's not in the market yet, um, that will be decided in due time. Uh, I would, couldn't possibly say at this moment in time. But they are looking at coming here because they are very interested in what's going on with the bar, bar scene here. So they, they should be available very, very soon. So. Here we go. So what I've done is, again, I'll just reiterate, we've, we've, we've just blended up some fresh pineapple, uh, some mint leaf, and some citrus juice. So this will be a little less sweet than we had the last time. Um, we've added in some passion fruit as well, um, just to add a little bit more flavor from our syrups. And that's our drink. It's just nice, light, and refreshing summary. So you're gonna have to give that a little taste. Again, no, walk, no alcohol, it's a mocktail. The good thing of being on this side is that you get to test it first. Definitely. Exactly. My dad yeah, 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 yeah. in my ear telling me I reserve some for him. <laughs> <laughs> Different test. Yeah. A little bit colder because of the ice. Of course, yeah. yeah. But good. Yeah. The, the, as, as Eugene said earlier, you know, it's one of those things. And what often is the inspiration behind the different types of uh, cocktails that you make? Um, it really comes down to the guest, you know, who's sitting in front of you. You need to engage with them and find out what they want because what you do is you attract them back to the bar. If you can give them what they want, a good experience, they will come back, you know. Mm -hmm. And if someone walks into your bar, clearly have no idea of what they want. Mm -hmm. uh, are there specific recommendations that you offer? Yeah, so how you'd approach it in that regard, if they're only new to the cocktail aspect, you'd ask them what they would typically drink. You know, if you drink, if you're a whiskey drinker, well then we can add to that. How would you usually drink your whiskey? You drink it with cola, so you have a sweet palate. So if you add it with soda water, you know, you can kind of work your way around it and, and, and just add and add and add until you get to the point where you use your education. Fair enough. Through. Eugene, what are some of the most common types of cocktails in the market? I mean, non-alcoholic, we, we really try to play around with uh, mojitos, pina colada, the classic Shelly Temple, which is basically orange gerardine topped off with a ginger soda, you know. But then for the alcoholic cocktails, we have the classic cocktails which still have remained. So we have the mojito, we have the old fashioned, and we have the Manhattan, which are basically what you'll find in your regular standard bar. But then when you now visit what I call craft bars or hotel bars, they have taken that and added just a little bit of a twist and put a little bit of notch that you can actually pay for value, you know. So you probably go to a hotel bar and it's charging 2,400 for relatively the same drink, but it's a better experience in terms of how it has been served. Which begs the question, in the local industry, why would someone walk into a bar and probably get a, a drink worth 3,000, of which, if we are to objectively judge the local market, it's a little bit expensive? I will, I, I will call it expensive because if, it's the same thing. If you love something that's craft, if, or if you love good food or good, um, good beverages, you know, you pay for every single thing because in the end of the day hospitality is about experience so do you want to get an experience that will make you remember and because when you have a great experience you never really think about the money 
And that's one thing I've learned, because you'll walk into a great bar, you get, you get great service, and in the back of your mind, you never really think about the money until when you're like, you get the bill and you're like, wow, did I just spend 4,000 or 5,000? And you're like, you know. Fair enough, Tom, as we conclude this conversation, mm -hmm. what are some of the elements, aspects that the local uh, industry can learn from experts such as you? Um, <laughs> thanks for calling ten, me an expert. Ten, but ten years of experience. Bro. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, the, um, it's, it's just one of those things. What I would always suggest is, uh, and the most important thing is community. You know, everywhere you go, um, if you're a bartender, being a part of the community, there's kind of like that brotherhood. No matter where you go in the world, and I'm yeah, sure you agree at, uh, from the travels, you know, community is so important. Sharing of information is so important, but also sourcing information is important. So we're all learning from each other in this industry. We're all sharing. You know, we're all one big family. And um, there's so much information online accessible there for free. You've got the likes of the bar schools, you've got the academies, just get involved. But most importantly, taste, you know, use your local ingredients. There's so many botanicals and herbs and everything in this, in this country, like use the local. Um, because that's what people want to come here and taste. And it encourages tourism and it encourages uh, that aspect of the bar. Eugene, finally, uh, where do you see the mixology industry in the next five to 10 years? If we are to be a little bit futuristic. I mean, to be a bit futuristic, I think with, uh, with a bartender as coming of age, we are looking at a place where now bartenders can actually have their own bars, you know? We're looking at people getting out of the se segment of just shaking and making cocktails to actually being entrepreneurs. And that's the most encouraging thing because you do not want to stay in this industry for 10 or 15 years and you have not yet grown, you know? And that's really important. I see a, a space where we're not just growing in terms of having our own uh, businesses, but we're also looking at cocktail festivals, which will play a bigger role in affecting what the consumers look at uh, and interpret cocktails to be like. Yeah. Fair enough. Tom O'Brien, mixologist, an Irish mixologist, Eugene Nyaundi, Africa Rum Guild mixologist as well, gentlemen. 